So I printed a large, took it the, a uh, megalodon tooth. The idea being is that you find arrowheads in the arrowheads, find shark's teeth in the Peace River. I'd like to do something with them. I think I've created a bracelet that's curing right now. Let's see here. I'll find it down here. Shark's teeth in there. It's out of this two part amazing clear cast uh, resin. Jewelry grade rosin it's supposed to cure completely clear. Took all the tiny shark's teeth and put them in this bracelet mold. Both those molds came from uh, Michael's. They're pretty expensive in a sense. That's eight bucks, nine bucks. The big bracelet one's about the same, about nine bucks. You can make your own rubber casting stuff uh, pretty cheaply out of um, regular pure silicone from a caulk tube and either baking soda, I'm sorry, not baking soda, cornstarch, or regular silicone in soapy water. There's a ton of videos online about it. And we'll try that next. And it's been so long since I've cast anything. I wanted to go with a known quantity. So, one of this high strength li liquid mold making rubber. Amazing mold rubber. Again from Michaels. This about 20 bucks. This about 20 bucks. You can probably get that much or more silicone out of a tube of silicone for uh, 4 bucks. So it's a much more cost-effective way to make casts. So we find these uh, shark's teeth. And these shark's teeth on the Peace River by um, shifting out the bottom with a sieve. All sorts of odds and all. Uh, and there's a uh, mouth parts off of stingrays, variety of shark's teeth, the left rights. You get a variety of different species of shark. Okay. The question is though, these things just sit in a case. These are all megalodon parts here. Animal and plant remains, plant remains. Crocodile teeth. Of course, that's all five to twenty odd million years ago. You might have seen all different kinds of teeth and tusks. And but they sit in a case. How good is that? You can take it out, look at it, and go, ooh, ooh, but that's about it. If I cast them into jewelry or things as a keepsake, it would be much more portable, much more easy to see, and much uh, much more useful, really. Look how close that is to, ooh, well, well uh, I think we're going to demold this. Well, looks like it's set up pretty well. Dun, dun, dun. Well, first, let's demold. Oh, that's going to be nice. Demold this. The concept being is I wanted a, something to store those in that I could look at them anytime and have a reason to go get more. So what I did was I printed up a megalodon tooth. I uh, pulled a whole bunch of versions of them down of shark's teeth. I only settled on a solo megalodon tooth that somebody had already cleaned up. And what I did was I printed it. I, I modified the model dramatically. I'll put a link in the description to my thing when I throw it up on Thingiverse. Um, gave it a ridge, put some supports on it, put it so far off of the surface. So 
so that way I can suspend it in a media and cast it. So this way, when I come back from when I come back from um, fossil hunting, I can very easily then cast all of the shark seed that I found in a clear rosin like this. Oh, I'm interested. I'm going to have to take a look at it. We're going to have to demold this right now. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right. This has been sitting for a day. Well, not quite a day, actually. I think uh, I did these about 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock yesterday morning. So, yeah, 24 hours. Let's see what this is going to look like. This is a bracelet mold. Yeah, nothing sticky, so I got a good mix on there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I don't think it'll fit me. Wow. Just wow. Now, I had a big problem. One of the things I found with shark's teeth is they like to settle. Look at that. this and I was constantly moving the top teeth around so I do have air bubbles in there and this will need to be cleaned up a bit on the edge here but that that's a keepsake right there huh? made these for the granddaughter But that way you can actually inspect and look at any of these shirt teeth without having to pull them out of a box. That is very cool. Clean up this edge. I don't think it'll fit me though. <laughs> Should we do the low one too? The low one was even less. Let's do the low one too. Alright, that popped right off. neat. Oh, and it's got a design to it, too. Uh, well, I can highly recommend these Michael's molds. They definitely work with... Oh, wow. Wow, that's pretty cool. So that's all the tiny, tiny shark's teeth that we found. And they did settle a bit, but I don't think that's going to make much of a difference because we can see all the different little baby shark teeth. Do, do, do. Very, 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 very cool. Again, now it's a thing, right? So you can 3D print these, uh, whatever model that you want, suspend it into rubber. And then cast that out of this rosin, clear rosin, and make whatever you'd like. Which is the whole idea then of, let me get a couple of pictures of this. Very cool. Yeah, you can see the bubbles. So what was happening, even though I let it sit for, I don't, know, I don't know, about an hour and change, I still wound up with, every time that I set one shark's tooth in there, it, it settled. So I'd have to say with this rosin, before you put shark's teeth in, in a situation like this, gravity held these in place, the bottom ones of course, but the top ones tended to settle. And you can see where I was screwed around trying to pull these up, etc. 
that's where all the bubbles came from. Oh, I probably ought to put that on camera. Yeah, you can see where all the bubbles are. Which, of course, in a sense, really doesn't change the coolness of it. It might even add to it. And that might take and do a slight blue tint to it. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, you can see a couple of bubbles. So the, the sharks, see, they're very, very dense. And they just tended to slowly settle down in there. I took a pair of tweezers and pulled them up. Not some of them up, but a couple of them here, like this one here. That's a, that's a big little bubble right there. No. Very cool. The bracelet's got some kind of design on it. I bet she's going to like that. Now on to the main event. The idea was simple. It's to, to create a, uh, a mold that I could just drop the shark's teeth into and fill up and then have a shark's tooth to save all the shark's teeth in. So I think I'm going to have to do is cut these guys off. Take them out individually. I think I needed to make it just a, these legs just a bit longer, really. Now I can always reattach these legs with um, a 3D pen. It's not a big deal. That's the length that I went in. I kind of had to compress those down in there because this mold right here is an entire jar of this mold making. So got a lot of waste in here. The next model I print, I'm going to print the box as part of the print. So that way I'll have as little waste as possible. And silicone is you know, kind of a pain in the neck, number one, to deal with. Number two, and we break this, not a big deal. I've got the mold model made. All I've got to do is push a button. This is PLA Plus. Yeah, see? I had, to, I had to press into it right there. Gonna have to do something about that. Kinda figured that was gonna happen. That should be repairable. And actually, it'll probably be fine if I just put a piece of tape across the bottom of this mold. Gonna lose that high spot, but I think we're gonna have to do another print, another casting. Duck, duck, duck. Well, I did to make the mold a piece of foam. I uh, used a 3M spray adhesive and some some uh, toothpicks to hold this mold in place, cut out the foam where I needed it. This is PLA Plus, and it seems to be releasing very nicely from this. This is taped off. I probably could print this same thing if I scooped out an indent in here, so that way this would have filled. So we're not going to have a perfect mold, but we're going to have a very functional mold that we are going to pour. Let's see how it, how it works. This is PLA Plus, and it did not use any mold release on it, and it does not seem like it matters. The mold seems to be releasing very nicely. Up. 
some of these myths are some it's a tale here. The, the model itself, we'll see in just a second, is um, got a rising part on each corner of it. So without tearing it, what do I do about that bottom part? It's set overnight, but it doesn't need to. I think it's got a, about a four hour cure time on it. And there you go. Look at that. Have a shark's tooth mold. So that's a tooth that I printed. All I did was to make this base part of it was I took a copy of the tooth, shrunk it down a bit. Extended it out and then sliced it off where I wanted to and made those supports so that way it would suspend it in there. If we've got a little bit of PLA plus still stuck in here, I'm sure PLA or ABS or anything would, would work just as well. Well, that is cool. But I don't want this red stuff, the red uh, PLA plus that's left in here. I obviously pulled one layer off. I don't want that to ever get stuck in the rosin. Alright. Very, very cool. Amazing mold rubber. We now have a, a very castable mold. And I left this ridge in on purpose. What I want to do is fill up to that up to that ridge. These high points might be a little bit tricky. We'd have to tilt the mold around a bit to get the rosin to completely flow up in there. Looking up in there and down in there. Uh, we can clean this model up and do a casting. We'll see how it works. Very cool.